In this video, we are going to talk about these six steps that you need to go through in order to choose a proper RC LiPo battery for your RC truck. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me doing bashing and crawling and drifting and racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. So no matter whether you are trying to do something like the Traxxas X Max, a race buggy, a drift car, maybe something like a crawler, whether it's a basher, you have multiple and multiple RC LiPo choices out there. There's so many of them that it's really hard to figure out what's the best one for you to purchase. And so we're gonna go through these six steps today that you need to go through in order to select your LiPo battery. Step number one, is right here honestly i know nobody likes to read the manuals but as it turns out almost every single one of the rc manuals has a section in it where it talks about the battery for the vehicle the manual will give you an idea of the cell rating and the c rating required for the vehicle so as an example right a crawler will tend to run on a 2s or 3s which is a two cell or three cell battery and Almost every vehicle that you will see and encounter in the RC world will be requesting at minimum a 30C or higher discharge rate on the battery. So it's two of the metrics that you immediately get, two of the numbers that you need to know right out of the box, and it's right here available in the manual. So step one, get the manual and check it out. For step number two, I recommend that you get the vehicle itself. What we're going to be doing is actually opening it up and measuring the battery tray. Step number two is where most people actually screw up that I see online. What we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be measuring the battery tray. So as an example for this Losi DB Pro, we're going to be measuring the height the length of a battery that will fit in there and then we'll be measuring the width right we need those three dimensions so that we don't accidentally buy a battery that doesn't actually fit in the hole i see this with so many people this is where they screw up they hit the first step they go online they click buy and the battery gets to them and it doesn't fit if you're shopping at your actual local hobby store you can even bring the vehicle with you to make sure that the battery fits before you even walk out of the store while you have the vehicle here you're actually going to go ahead and look at item number three which is what is the battery plug type on that vehicle all right, I tend to use these XT90 plugs, but there is a whole wide variety of battery plugs that are available on all the different vehicles. It is easier if you can buy a battery that goes ahead and actually has the same connector for it to make your life easier, but that's not required. One of the aspects of this hobby is soldering, and we'll get into that later. It's easier than you think for, and you can change plugs out in the long run. It saves you money because you're able to buy a battery that maybe doesn't have the plug for a cheaper price and adapt it to fit in your vehicle. Step number four is choosing the power level that you really need. Many, many examples of this. This low CDB Pro is set up to where it'll run either 2S or 3S. Which one do you actually want? Do you want that higher power level or are you comfortable with the lower power level? I find most people actually step up to too high a voltage too early in their RC career and get themselves in trouble. A lot of the times, especially for my kids or depending on the kind of bashing that I'm doing, we will actually run like the 2S in this instead of the 3S. Same thing with the Arma 3S line, like we have the Arma Typhon. Same thing even with like a 6S Traxxas Sledge or a 6S Arma Creighton. Those vehicles will also run very well on a 4S LiPo instead of the 6S that's out there and that its maximum rating is. The positive side of that is a lot of times if you're running that little bit lower voltage, you're probably going just a little bit slower, which means your crashes are going to hurt a little bit less and you're probably going to be buying less parts. So consider the voltage that you want when you're buying the battery. Also consider that most vehicles at this day and age actually have a selectable throttle uh, limiter on the controller. So even if you do get the higher voltage battery, you could actually just limit the total speed on the controller until you're really ready for all that voltage. Step number five is it's time to go actually look to see what's available and what you can purchase. So whether you're going to your local hobby store, a maybe an, a retailer like A-Main Hobbies, or even if you're looking on Amazon, you need to go out 
out there and start doing the searches with the metrics you know. A very easy to start with is something like searching for, if I'm looking at an X-Max battery, 4S LiPo. Get that search started, start there. Make sure you're looking at all these metrics that we talked about. What are the C ratings? Basically what you wanna do is buy the highest C rating battery that you can find. The other thing that you wanna do is you wanna look at that milliamp hour and the total dimensions of the battery. What is, for maybe for a basher, you wanna find what is truly the biggest battery that you can fit in your vehicle. The higher that milliamp hour, MAH number is, the longer the battery will last, the longer you will be able to drive your vehicle. So you gotta look at these kind of things. Is it smarter to buy maybe a slightly smaller battery? Is it drastically cheaper to buy a 5,000 milliamp battery instead of an 8,000 milliamp? Could you get two for the price of one and have more total runtime? These are the kind of things that you need to consider. Uh, now you've gone through five steps and you've got your vehicle, you've got your batteries, everything's all in one spot. You basically only have one step left to do, which is to swap the plugs and charge the battery. So if you are interested in learning how to solder and all of the different types of RC plugs that are very commonly used in the industry, then I have a video that's going to pop up a little card right here where you can go and look at that. Check out uh, how to solder all the different types of plugs that are very common. Again, highly recommended, saves you money in the long run and gives you a lot more flexibility in your RC adventure. The second thing that's part of this uh, step number six here is you need to charge this battery now. And that can be daunting for a lot of folks the first time out. So I am going to put a link right up here at the end of this video directly to a very basic 101 level of how to charge your LiPo batteries and care for them appropriately. So head over to one of these two videos where soldering or charging and we will see you there. Thank you and goodbye.